and the growing hatred for the military. In the capital, Naypyidaw, we finally have the opportunity to confront Myanmar's senior military leadership. I will tell you the reason why we have to crack down. The protests were peaceful from February 1st to the 8th. The reason for the crackdown was because they blocked civil servants. The security forces are giving warnings. Firstly, shouting to break the crowds and then shooting in the air. And the crowds are throwing stones and using slingshots. Are you seriously comparing stones and slingshots to assault rifles? The military is using weapons against its own people that really only belong on the battlefield. They got all. The main thing is, they are not only using stones and slingshots. We have evidence they use gasoline and Molotov cocktails. You have to add those too. For the security forces, they use crackdown weapons for riots. There will be deaths when they are cracking down the riots, but we are not shooting without discipline with the rifles we use for the front lines. So this is CCTV footage of 17-year-old Kwame Law going past a police convoy. You can see the police shoot him on the spot. His autopsy later said that he suffered brain injury as a result of a cycling accident, which I think we can all see that's not a cycling accident. How do you explain this? If that kind of thing has occurred, we will have investigations for it. We will investigate it if it's true or not. There may be some videos which look suspicious, but for our forces, we don't have any intention to shoot at innocent people. So 14-year-old Tun Tun Ong, who was killed by your forces, what do you say to his mother? You say that he was a violent protester? Or what would you say to the father of 13-year-old Tun Mat Win? also shot dead by your forces. We have heard about the deaths of the children too. There is no reason we will shoot children. This is only the terrorists that are trying to make us look bad. But the lies are paper thin. According to the UN, as of March 31st, at least 44 children had been killed. Back in Yangon, our minders take us to another market in a military area keen to show they have popular support. But the ploy backfires. I understand. <clears throat> Man just told me we want democracy as he walked past, but he was too scared to stop and talk. Others are more bold. Save your These people are not activists. They are ordinary citizens, and they live in fear of the military. You have goosebumps. You would like shivering. Not, they are not human. Yeah. They're not human. They are desperate for the outside world to know their pain. One girl approaches us shaking. I feel like you're very nervous. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. We are not sick anymore. And even in the night, uh, they are shouted and uh, shouted and shoot the children. Uh, I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want you to get arrested. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Hello. All right. She knows her bravery will certainly be punished, okay. but this is a resistance movement built on small acts of great courage. Aaron, that woman was unfortunately arrested just as she was running away from the market. Seven others were also arrested. Their only crime, talking to CNN. Thankfully, they were all released after a couple of days, but it's really just an illustration of how threatened the military is by this popular movement and also how extraordinarily brave these men and women are risking their own security to make their voices heard across the world, Aaron. I mean, Chris, so your, your reporting is incredible and, of course, brave on its own. The bravery, as you point out, though, I'm deeply moved by those people, um, the, those three fingers, just deeply moved by your entire report. Um, the Biden administration, you know, has put out sanctions on, on you know, any sorts of companies that there are in, in Myanmar. Myanmar, what impact are the sanctions having? 
So U.S., the U.K., the European Union, they've all imposed sanctions on the junta. But in reality, the West doesn't have a huge amount of leverage here. And so far, what we haven't seen, Aaron, is a meaningful, unified response from the international community to the crisis in Myanmar. And that's why those people were so desperate. And that's why they risked everything to tell us their stories, Aaron. Well, we're so grateful. They're grateful. I'm sure all these governments are talking about are grateful that you have now put a voice. And April a picture 8, to it, and to them, uh, it cannot feel like more, thanks to you. Help the people in Myanmar. Thank you, Clarissa. And thanks to all of you for watching. Anderson starts now. Good evening. We're following breaking news tonight. A mass shooting in Bryan, Texas, northwest of Houston, just a few miles from Texas. Using guitar chords. G, C, and D. Help the people in Myanmar. Help the people in Myanmar. Help the people. Help the people in Myanmar. Yeah, they've been taken over by a military coup. Democracy swept away. Come on, get their back. Come on, come on. 